high. Let's talk about being able to monitor learning in real time when we're teaching online. Sometimes you need to do that. For example, if you're teaching a test each test lesson and you want to monitor what the learners are doing in the initial test or the diagnostic test. Sometimes you might want to teach writing lessons and you want the students to write and at the same time you want to be looking at what they are writing. So there are many occasions when a teacher has to monitor learning in real time online. It's very easy to do when you're teaching face to face. You walk around, you look at the students course books or handouts, you see exactly what they're writing. When you're teaching online, that's also possible. And this is what we're going to talk about now. Imagine that you wanted to teach this exercise online. The learners need to complete the gaps with prepositions from the list. What teachers usually do when they teach online is they take a screenshot of this activity, they put it on screen and they tell the learners, okay, please do this activity. You have three minutes to do it individually. And the learners work from the screen. They write down the answers on a piece of paper or on their phones. And then the teacher asks them to check with their partner and then open class feedback is done all together where the learners tell you their answers. However, the only time when you get to hear the answers is when you're monitoring pair work. What if you wanted to be able to monitor exactly when the students are doing the activity? If you want to monitor, this means that you cannot simply show them a screenshot like this you need to use Google Drive documents. I'm going to show you two options. Option one is where you have a document for each learner. And option two is where you have just one document for all your learners. The second option is slightly easier. So if you're really afraid of using something new in your classes because it might go wrong, then go for the second option or try both and see which one works best for you. What you need to do is you need to first type up the exercise that you want your learners to do. If you simply uploaded a screenshot from the course book, the learners won't be able to fill in the gaps because it's a picture and the learner cannot write on top of it. Here's how you retype it. Well, open a Word document, type up your activity. To make this go quicker, you could dictate it. So open your phone, click the microphone, just read out the activity, then edit it real quick and there you have it so you don't need to type it or sometimes you might be able to copy paste from the screenshot itself instead of typing the whole thing but it doesn't take too long to retype one activity so once you have your word document we will need to do this first things first you need to have a gmail account this is absolutely free. If you still don't have one, you need to do that first. I'm sure you can do that yourself. Once that is done, you need to open Google Drive. On Google Drive, you're going to create a folder. It's very simple. You just press New Folder. I'm going to call it Option 1, Separate Documents. You could just create a folder and name it with the context of the lesson or the date of the lesson, doesn't matter, as long as you just have one folder for that lesson. And let's make another folder and call it option two, one document. Okay, let's start with option one, creating a separate document for your learners. You can upload the Word document you prepared 
in two different ways. Option one is again to right click and click File Upload. Then find your document, mine is here, Exercise for Students, and click Open. Here you have it. Let's delete it so I can show you an even quicker way. Another way is to drag and drop your document from your computer onto Google Drive, like this. The result is the same. See which option you prefer. When you open this document, you'll see that it's exactly the same document as I have on my desktop, the one I prepared for my learners. Now, let's prepare for our lesson. You need to create copies of this document that you uploaded. The number of copies depends on the number of learners you have in class. For demonstration purposes, let's pretend that we have four learners in the group. So I click those three dots and then I click make a copy. And I do the same three times. Make a copy. Make a copy. And another time, make a copy. If you're teaching a lesson on a course where you're encouraged to use Google Drive documents or other interactive resources, and you don't really know the exact number of students who are going to be there in the lesson, then ask your tutor for the maximum number of students that may come to class and prepare that number of documents. But when you start your lesson, you usually start with a lead-in. Prepare your lead-in in a way that would let the learners discuss a specific question in pairs while you finalize your Google Drive documents. I created the copies and now it's time for me to prepare those documents for my lesson. I need to open each copy. What I'm going to do now is I need to rename these documents using my students' names. Let's imagine that one of my students is Adam. I can just say Adam or I can say Adam exercise. Then let's say another student is Emily. Another student is Anna. And my final student is Andrew, for instance. Now that you've done this, if we go back to this folder and refresh the page, you'll see that those documents are now renamed so we don't get confused whose document belongs to which student and you also have the file that we uploaded the original one i would actually keep it why maybe in the future you'll want to reuse this activity then you won't need to try and find it on your desktop you'll know that it's there in this folder another important thing is to save the links for your learners now, let's imagine that I have my lesson plan, which is already filled in, and I just want to save the links to save time when I actually teach. So you open your procedure. At the moment, for me, it's just an empty document. And I am going to save my links. My first link is for Adam. So I'm going to say Adam, then I'm going to click share, change restricted to anyone with the link, and change viewer to editor. 
it's very important to go through these steps because if you don't, when your learners get to this document, they won't be able to write anything. Then you copy link and you paste it onto your lesson plan. That's it. This is done. I can close it. Now, Emily, I write down Emily, share, restricted to anyone with the link, viewer to editor, and only now I copy my link and I put it onto my lesson plan. I can close this and now Anna, share, restricted anyone with the link, and we change viewer to editor and copy the link. Paste it onto your lesson plan. Close it. And the final one, restricted anyone with the link, viewer to editor. Copy link. This was Andrew. Okay, and that's my first option of using Google Documents where I prepare a separate document for each learner, that's it. Then when I teach my lesson, all I have to do the moment I want my learners to work in these documents is to copy paste and put it onto the Zoom chat. I would then tell my learners to click the link next to their name. And that's it. If I click this, let's imagine I'm Adam and he clicks this link. That's what he sees. And Emily gets her own document. And Anna gets her own document. And Andrew gets his own document. While they are working in these documents, you can keep clicking through these documents and you would then be able to monitor exactly what they are doing in real time. So this is option one, where you have a separate document for each learner. Of course, when you're teaching a regular group of learners, you know that you always have six learners and it's very simple to create the six documents for them. Now let's talk about option two, where you have just one document for all your learners. This is a simpler way to go about it, and I would probably recommend starting with option two if you are brand new to using Google Drive documents when you teach online. So for this, you need to create an empty Google document. Just click it here. When that's done, you're going to go to Insert, Table, and then just select one box. Then let's stick to me having four learners, for example. First learner was Adam. So I'm just going to write Adam here. I'll make it very clear. I'll probably change the font. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to copy paste the task that I retyped from the course book. This is our exercise. I copy paste it and then I put it in the box here. There we go. I can make it look nice the way I like it. Following on, I'm going to do the same thing for three more learners. So I'm going to click insert, table, just select one box, and then insert, table, select one box. You could actually just copy paste this whole thing uh, that's already there for Adam. Um, table, one box. Okay, now I'm going here and I'm just copy pasting that and putting it in the other box. Okay, I'm going to do it three times. And I shouldn't forget to change the names. So, um, Anna, Andrew, and let's say 
jazz. All right, so I'm going to rename this as well. I'm going to call it exercise. So here I have just one document. If I rename this, you'll see that it's now called exercise. Now, what I need to do before the lesson while planning it is exactly the same thing as we did in option one, but we are going to do it just once. So you click share. You change restricted to anyone with the link. You change viewer to editor. You copy the link and you paste it onto your lesson plan. So let's say link for students. During the lesson, when it's time for the learners to do this exercise on Google Drive, you will put the link onto the chat and tell the learners to find the box that has their name and work there. When they are working individually and in pairs, you'll be able to see the changes they are making in the document itself. So if Adam is going to write at, you'll see that he changed it. And they can also cross out things or delete things. It will be so easy for them to actually work in this document rather than simply work from a screenshot. Let's just double check this link, what opens up. Uh, so when the learners click that, this is what they see. Let's say my name is Jess, for instance. I look for my bit. Okay, that's mine. And Jess starts working in her own box. If you're teaching a year-long course, for instance, then it's worth creating a separate document for each learner and you can keep using the same document all the time. You'll simply share the link once with each learner. So for example, Adam gets his link in the beginning of the course. Andrew gets his link in the beginning of the course. Anna gets her link and Jess gets her link. Let's say we have a group of four learners. So the first task we do on the course appears in their document when it's needed. Then, as we go on with the course, you will just keep copy-pasting things onto their documents. And this will be your learner's virtual notebook, which, when the course ends, they will be able to save and use for reference if they want to go back and revise something. So you don't really need to keep creating these Google Drive Word documents for each lesson if you're teaching a regular group of learners. However, if you're doing a training course like CELTA, for instance, where you do not really know who your learners are going to be, you will have some regular learners that will keep coming to classes all the time, but then you will also have a bunch of learners that will keep changing. In this case, you will need to create these from scratch for your assessed lesson. See which option you prefer, having just one document for your learners or having a separate document for each learner. Give it a try. It's very important to be able to monitor learning in real time when you teach online.